animals and human beings. In other words, there's really just a very narrow part of the electromagnetic spectrum that's going to be useful for living processes like photosynthesis. It's not as if life could have evolved to use gamma radiation or X-ray radiation or something like that. There's really just a narrow part of the spectrum that would be useful to life processes. Well, as it turns out, that's also the same narrow part of the spectrum that is the most informative about the various structures that we discover in the universe around us. These specific frequencies that enable plants to manufacture food and astronomers to observe the cosmos represent less than one trillionth of a trillionth of the universe's range of natural electromagnetic emissions. Fortunately, it is the type of light our sun produces in abundance, and that most easily penetrates the filtering shield of our atmosphere to reach the surface of the Earth. It's a remarkable coincidence that the kind of atmosphere that's needed for complex life like ourselves does not preclude that life from observing the distant universe. It's a surprise. It's something that you wouldn't expect just chance to produce. Why would the universe be such that those places that are most habitable also offer the best opportunity for scientific discovery? In 1997, Guillermo Gonzalez began a study of the Earth's specific location within the Milky Way galaxy. It would eventually lead him to more evidence of a correlation between life and discovery. Just as our location in the solar system is optimized for habitability, so is our location in the galaxy. We inhabit a spiral galaxy, which means it's highly flattened, it has a spherical bulge in the center, and it has spiral arms. And we live about halfway between the center of the galaxy and the edge. Working closely with astrobiologist Peter Ward and Donald Brownlee, Gonzalez compared our position in the Milky Way to other regions within an often hostile galaxy. The galaxy has a lot of dangers. And perhaps the most dangerous place in the galaxy is the galactic center. Well, in the center of the galaxy, this density of stars is, is very high, and there are more supernovas and stuff. And there are things that could harass life right in the dead center regions of our galaxy. You also have the giant black hole at the very center of the galaxy. And if it were to have a close encounter with a star passing near it, it would rip it to shreds and form an accretion disk around it and emit lots of radiation, particle radiation and electromagnetic radiation, gamma rays, x-rays. While a black hole, exploding stars, and deadly radiation would make complex life virtually impossible near the galactic core, the outer edge of the Milky Way poses other challenges to habitability. In the outer regions, uh, the situation is much more subtle. We live on a planet made out of iron, magnesium, and silicon, and oxygen. If we went in the more distant regions of our galaxy, out towards the outer, outer edge, the abundances of these elements are lower. There probably aren't enough heavy elements to build Earth-sized planets that can support life. So there's a happy median between the dangerous galactic center and the outer edge of the galaxy. Gonzalez, Brownlee, and Ward labeled this region where complex life is possible within the Milky Way the galactic habitable zone. Their theory was first published in 2001 and has since received growing acceptance among astrobiologists. There's a lot more research that needs to be done to determine just how wide the habitable zone is, but I think there's general agreement that yes, there are definitely places in the galaxy that you cannot have civilizations because they're very dangerous. And there are places where you just have a very low abundance of heavy elements. While these obstacles to habitability are minimized far from the core and edge of the Milky Way, Gonzalez has also identified large areas within the galactic habitable zone itself, which are less hospitable to complex life. Even within the habitable zone in the galaxy, it's broken by the spiral arms, which are dangerous places. That's where most of the supernovae go off in the galaxy. That's where uh, the star formation is taking place. 
we don't want to be too close to a spiral arm. We, we want to be outside the spiral arm at about the right region of the galaxy. It appears this is precisely where the Earth is located, in the relatively safe and uncrowded region between the Sagittarius and Perseus arms of the Milky Way. Location is everything, and so we occupy that special place in the galaxy where habitability is optimized, threats are minimized, and we have enough building blocks to build an Earth. Guillermo Gonzalez and Jay Richards have conducted research on another facet of the galactic habitable zone. They now argue that the Earth is also located in the best setting within our galaxy for astronomical research. As it turns out, our position in the universe is not only critical for life, but it's also surprisingly important for making scientific discoveries. We're located near the midplane of the galaxy, a very highly flattened galaxy, between spiral arms in a region with very low dust extinction. While we are in the plane of the galaxy, that does not obscure a large part of the sky, so we can have very clear views. For more than a century, this nearly ideal platform of observation has enabled astronomers to study the structure of the Milky Way. Looking toward the constellation Sagittarius on a clear night, for example, we see that the stars in our galaxy are not uniformly distributed across the sky. Instead, they appear as part of a concentrated band, a flattened disk of stars, dust and gas, 100,000 light years in diameter. The Milky Way band in the night sky is us looking edge on into the plane of the galaxy. If we were living in the center of the galaxy, things would look much more spherically distributed. And so it would be very hard to distinguish things that are inside the galaxy from things that are outside. And it's also very dusty, much dustier towards the galactic center than it is in our region. And so the views of the distant universe will be much more difficult to obtain, they'll be much more compromised. Similar problems would exist for astronomers working on a planet located within any of the galaxy's spiral arms. Here, denser concentrations of dust clouds and gas illuminated by stars would make it difficult to determine the shape of the Milky Way or to distinguish the stars in our galaxy from the rest of the universe. On the surface of the Earth, we're really in the optimum position for seeing both the nearby structure of the Milky Way galaxy as well as seeing the distant cosmos as a whole. So once again, we see that the best location for habitability and for producing a habitable planet is also the best overall position for scientific discovery, in this case, at the galactic scale. For centuries, the fact that we can discover things about the universe has really been something of a mystery. Why would beings like ourselves be able to discover a universe like this? Why is what we think about the universe, why would it correspond to the way things really are? Our ability to discern and understand the universe is a fundamental part of what makes the universe tick, so that we're linked into it. This isn't just a sort of an accident, a trivial little byproduct. It is something that is linked to the great cosmic scheme of things. Now, I have no idea how that linkage works, why it's there, or anything of that sort, uh, but I'm very, very struck by the fact that we can understand the universe uh, in such exquisite detail and at such a deep level. The spectacular progress of modern astronomy and physics is the product of a universe accessible to the human eye and mind. It is a universe governed by laws and forces that literally hold our planet Earth and the entire cosmos together and are finely calibrated to allow for both complex life and scientific discovery.